Good morning, Gunny here again. I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to go through the construction and use of a, of a uh, spiders on your on your spindle, the outboard spider and the inboard spider. Actually, I'm not going to construct it. I'm going to deconstruct it. I thought it'd take a couple of hours to show you how to build one of these things. So what I'm going to do is, rather than spend all that time watch you, uh, having you watch me make chips, I'll just uh, take them apart and explain the operations and the tools I use in that. And uh, so with that, uh, I guess I'll get started started with that. I'm going to move the camera over where you can see the see the spindles on the on the lathe. Hopefully, we can get a good shot of this. Now I just got these roughed in uh, with my uh, dial indicators. See, so I can zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, now that's the rear spider, and you can see that uh, I've got a I've got a set screw here that holds this right to the spindle. Excuse me, let me turn that around a little bit. Uh, and this set screw with a with a good tight slip fit over that, then this set screw is plenty. Then I've got four adjustment uh, jacking screws, some people call them, around this. And I've got it adjusted into, I've got it, my dial indicators to about, uh, uh, to within five or six thousandths on that end. Uh, the next step would be, and I'm not going to go through it, but the next step would be to, now let me take you over here to the front, to the front one, and we're zoomed in on it. And this spider, I made and I attached it to a, to a back, uh, to a back plate. And again, I've got the four, four, these are three eighths by 16 uh, adjustment screws to, just like a four judge chuck, you just rock that in. And I guess I got that within about uh, six or eight thousandths. Uh, and at this point, what I would do uh, is, uh, like for barrel work, I would switch over to one ten thousandths. I'd have an indicator rod in here with a, with a, a, a correct bushing on it, and then I'd I'd have, I'd put two indicators on this end and get that thing down as, to the least amount of run out as possible. All right, now I'm going to take you back over here. All right, finally got that, finally got these things off. Now, uh, now this one is pretty obvious. This is what goes in the outdoor spindle. What I did was I, I bored this out to uh, about 1.65 or so, the outside diameter of my spindle on the outside, and I made a good tight slip fit. And with that good tight slip fit, I, I uh, uh, this one this one thing will will hold on there pretty good. And then, of course, now. If you don't have an indexing head or something, what I use is, a, is I just use my four jaw chuck, and I'll put I'll put my workpiece in there, and you got four machine service in those chucks. Then I just scribe it to to get my uh, with four screws like this. Of course, they're 90 degrees apart, and that gives me a mark to to where to drill my holes. Uh, but otherwise, I drill this to the uh, this this outside diameter. Uh, the, or, or the, the outside diameter, the inside diameter here is is drilled to the, is drilled to the, like I say, the outside diameter of the spindle over there. And this diameter, I just take it a little bit bigger than the, than the hole through my spindle, which my, mine I think is one and five sixteen. So I, I took it just a little bit bigger than that, so I can get my largest workpiece through there. Other than that, it's just a matter of. Uh, of uh, drilling and tapping some holes, and I'll show you something in a minute there. Now, in this one, I've got it set up to where uh, it's pretty similar, except I mounted this one to a back plate. 
And I'm going to take this apart real quick and just show you. Uh, I've got it in there pretty good. Let's see if I can get it untightened now. <clears throat> Boy, that thing's done there. I guess I really didn't want it to move much. Okay. Yeah, I'll get it out of here. Okay. Start to loosen up a little bit. Okay. Let's get these out of here. Now this one, I've got three screws. So this one, I put this workpiece into my three-jaw chuck to, to get, uh, because th that way I can lay out the, on these three holes, that ho hold it in there. It gave me the 120 degrees between them that I needed. Uh, if you've got a, if you've got a, a, uh, another setup, then that's fine too. All right, let's get this one here. Loosen up. All right, here it comes. Pretty. Now, in both, in this one I used, uh, of course, I got the back plate, that's cast iron, but I used a 6061 aluminum in this. No particular reason I had it in about the four inch size that I wanted. Uh, this I used uh, some uh, uh, mild steel that shined up pretty good and it's perfectly satisfactory. All right now. Okay. Guess I could have blown that out a little bit better uh, when I was doing this. All right. And these are uh, these are three eighths by sixteen. Uh, they're one inch, which should be enough for anybody, uh, with a brass tip. I get these from MSC. Uh, there's there's other people that carry them too, but that's just where I got mine. This is a pretty simple. Uh, uh, a, a pretty simple machining uh, job. Uh, you got to take some time and try to get your holes and stuff as precise as possible. Uh, and of course, it makes it a lot nicer if you got a a mill or I I, I use a mill for this for drilling and tapping, but. Uh, uh, now, the, the one key thing that I did is when I mounted this to the, I mounted this to my back plate, I didn't want any lateral movement, uh, uh, so I, what I did was I, I took a boring bar and I bored this out uh, here to the exact, or very close to exact, it's a real tight fit there, uh, so that this, so this will register against this it's about 120 thousandths, a little over a tenth inch deep here uh, that uh, gives me that. And then, and now when I drilled the holes for this, uh, I drilled uh, uh, the hole clear through the, through the, both pieces at the same time so that I had, uh, the holes were centered up between this 
and the lathe, and of course, I mean, and the back plate, and of course, I did this. I would have made my own back plate. However, these uh, these uh, cam lock cam locks and a little retaining screw, it costs about the best price I've seen is about eighteen dollars a piece. Which what is that? About forty eight dollars or or something a. Uh, 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 for a set of them, well, I bought this uh, uh, fairly nice uh, back plate, certainly adequate back plate, that fits my D14 cam lock just fine, for about 50 bucks off eBay. So it didn't really pay me to make it. Now, there's, I'm going to walk over to this other cam camera. I want to show you uh, a little thing I did to make my to make it a little easier to to tap. I'm sure I'm sure all of you've got something similar, but this is just the way I do it. I made this little bar. Uh, actually, it's a little collar and a bar. And uh, uh, what it, do, it screws in here. And then, of course, you, you put your tap in first. It's a good tight fit, but you put your tap in first, and uh, uh, of course I bored this out to as close to that dimension as I could, and then I put a, I threaded a hole here. Now, if you can see this, I made this rod here. The end of this rod is just the right length and uh, depth to go into that. One of these three holes you got around on any on any drill chuck. And then I threaded part of it so that it goes in here, and it's not only because of my handle, but it's also my retaining screw for this. And it uh, it works real well, at least for me. Then you get it. It doesn't take much to get it in there. Just tighten it up, and then it makes it nice. I can set my piece and get it all indicated in the mill, my vise, and then just a little downward pressure here. Uh, I get a real good job of of a of, 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 of tapping. All right, moving back over here to this other camera. Uh, there's a few things here I want to show you that I find critical for a job like this. Uh, you may have other workarounds. Uh, one is. Uh, a good boring bar. Now this one is one I've had for, gosh, I don't know, 25 years. It takes a, a, a nice carbide insert, and it's uh, 10 inches long, and the, the bar itself is solid, solid uh, carbide. Uh, you can do it high, high speed steel or whatever you want, but uh, uh, I find this invaluable, and and this will bore a hole. Uh, I need a hole of about oh uh, a five eighths inch hole to, to, to start boring, and uh, uh, but this is this is a they're not inexpensive. I think this one probably costs now to replace it uh, the boring bar and some inserts. You're probably looking at 150 bucks. So you can get away with uh, with other boring bars. And you could actually use a shorter boring bar, uh, uh, though if you're doing a long work, like you're building a, a uh, action jig, uh, if you don't have a longer uh, boring bar, you'll uh, you'll uh, you'll have to turn it in for end and do do it from both ends. I like the carbide because you still have to take some cleanup cuts because it'll it'll there'll be a little bit of flex in it. Uh, but with high-speed steel and my uh, uh, boring bars that I've had before, uh, the bar itself, they'd be more flex, but of course you just take a few more cleanup cuts and that takes care of that. The second item, I imagine uh, many of you that have done much uh, uh, drilling with your tailstock uh, have had problems with the, with, the, with the chuck wanting to turn or whatever. Now I've had this I've had this bit for about thirty years. I, I give it a little hone once in a while, but this is a one and sixteenth inch Morse taper three with with a with a 
little shank on the end, and this goes in the tailstock, my MT3 on the tailstock, and it locks in there. And it just cuts nicely. I, I don't know how many boring jobs I use that. Then I've got some other sizes for, uh, for smaller sizes, but uh, you want you want uh, you want uh, a drill uh, that will so you can drill out that first hole that's big enough for your for your boring bar to, to clear to start boring. Now some people might ask, well, why don't you use some tube? Well, uh, I've used tube sometimes if I can get a thick enough wall. Well, I'd have had a heck of a time trying to find something with about a about a, uh, uh, a 1.65 uh, uh, ID and a four inch. Uh, so, so uh, it doesn't take long to bore them out. Okay, that's uh, see. I covered the the drill and the boring bar, and uh, I guess that's uh, that's about all I got now. If uh, if any any of you got some uh, comments or questions or uh, or suggestions, I'd sure appreciate it. And uh, thank you very much. Bye.